every project starts with one big question. How much will it cost? And there are software choices that influence this price as well. Throughout my journey at Vogue Design, we've had successful launches of over 500 clients' projects, and we've had a lot of painful experiences of overcost. I realized that a successful product UI is about four things. making a comfortable layout, choosing proper style, delivering according to GUI framework, this is how developers build the UI, and how the product is visually represented to the users. And with three steps of four, software choice plays a crucial role. To demonstrate this in our studio, our UI designer and 3D designer, Alex, will design the same piece of software in neomorphic style using the good old Photoshop, the young and ambitious Figma, and almost free Blender with all-in-one 3D model tool that we've seamlessly adapted into our workflow. And of course, I'll share how we created this UI example, the nice one. I remember a situation with a client who returned to update some elements of the UI two or three years after the plugin launch. And guess what happened? We've had it, but it wouldn't open. And when it did, the results were a bit different on the export stage. This happens once or twice to this guy, Photoshop. When I ask clients about 2D or 3D for UI, most likely they think of Photoshop. You can create textures, UI illustrations, and much more in Photoshop. The UI will look close to realism and the backgrounds would be nice, so as the shades. Alex took on the challenge, he's doing the entire UI from scratch here, and it took him 80 minutes for this initial layout to achieve a result similar to other software. What are the advantages of using Photoshop for designs like this? First off, it's proven software that many designers know and trust. It's great for complex UIs, but it has its limitations as Adobe crashes. The program interface and functionality are quite complicated, so you need an experienced designer to use its full potential. Luckily, Photoshop is an old tool and one can easily self-educate to a certain level of proficiency with it. This program works primarily with raster shapes historically, and the UI preview is perceived as more raster in terms of workflow. Alex had to convert each UI element into a smart object to make iterations faster and less painful. But those smart objects are isolated from your entire interface, so Alex is editing controls without knowing where the other controls are in this layout. Despite having vector tools here, Alex had to rasterize the final result for the export. And if you want to upscale the UI after two or three years, it might be a lottery. Will it open and give you the same result? In most cases, it will. Since Pro Audio software is moving to mobile and web, unlike being standalone, how do you choose software for that? You'd stick to Figma. Figma's pricing model, ease of learning, easy export, and web focus have taken the pro audio scene by storm. Unlike Photoshop, it uses vector lines that are always clean and crisp, though with less detail. Go ahead, zoom in, there is nothing to lose. I'll expand just an hour on the design you are looking at. Working in Figma is faster than in Photoshop, even though Figma has fewer effects. Now, think about the downsides before making this tool your main player. It's cloud-based, it's subscription, which means you don't have to worry about saving progress into the cloud. Uh, but did we have problems with the uh, trusting cloud service? None in our practice. Did you? Still, it's a fantastic tool for creating smooth, dreamy nomophic shapes. And you know why? Well, Alex didn't use any 3D software to make this look almost real. Check out the shadows. They are all vectors combined with effects to give you that depth. Look how easily you can adjust colors in all the elements at once, while these elements are independent and movable 
they share a single color setting as a group. This is really cool. Working in Figma, Alex can export the results faster and make changes on the go. What does it mean for you? Fast delivery and less expensive revisions. Figma is that easy to learn and works on even cheap laptop. So you have a risk of getting, uh, of hiring a designer who is good at copying, but can deliver the cool UI animations, illustrations, or posters that make an impact on your audience. And that's why we are moving to the next tool, the tool to create expensive promo and 3D. Remember when you wanted to create an amazing promo just like those big companies with the UI at a nice angle shot? To make an effective demonstration, sometimes it really needs to be in 3D. And what if the UI is done in 3D to reduce the promo costs? That leads us to Blender. We use Blender to make audio plugins look realistic. And it took 110 minutes to deliver the result that you are seeing. Why Blender? It's the most affordable 3D software that recreates real-world physics and how light reflects off different materials. Plus, you can easily move around your product as if you're holding a video camera. And Blender is really affordable. Sounds great, but you'll need a powerful computer to achieve this result. Building a 3D model involves creating a framework, a skeleton with shape and depth. And you add materials, set them up, add some lights, Alex placed lights to give you those soft, pleasant shadows, but it's a slow process. Exporting from Blender sometimes takes hours to complete. And I'm talking about all your iterations too. That will eat into your budget for sure. Disclaimer. You can only see how your textures and shadows really look after the render. That's the export process in 3D software called rendering. This can be a huge drawback for some projects. Moreover, you need to know how to align all interface elements to the grid precisely in Blender. It's not that easy. So using Blender for simple UIs isn't efficient because Figma can handle it, especially if you don't need any promo on motion video. Your designer will spend too much time creating such static user interfaces which are almost flat. In addition to these issues, we've also had two or three cases where we couldn't open files after some time or if we did, the exported images were in the same forcing us to redo the project from scratch just like with Photoshop. Ultimate design version. It wouldn't be me if I didn't want to show you a nicer version on how we'd approach the UI that requires a nice promo and is easily to edit over time. This is the path we choose when we know that the UI will require 3D or motion presentation and is more complex than what you saw earlier. We will stick to the pneumorphic style, but the previous layout doesn't show much. So we decided to play around with it a bit. Now see what happens when Alex enhances the colors and the layout a bit more. It now looks like a high-end, expensive plugin, and to achieve this, Alex used more than one product. Let's call it ultimate design version. It took 66 minutes to get here from the previous results. Point with this UI is to take the best of both worlds. Autorealism achieved through modeling in Blender and fine details added in Figma. Why did Alex do so? It's faster and the stylistic details you see here often change so many times during iterations. It's much easier to adjust them in Figma and instantly export the results rather than redo them in Blender and wait for the render to complete. Once we agree on the basic shape of the plugin, like the skeleton of your UI, we don't change it. So to summarize, complex UIs and striking presentations thrive with Photoshop and Blender. Though they have downsides in requiring more experienced designers, hardware, and backups, quick, more generic, and redoable results require just Figma. Plus, you can hire another freelancer to recreate UI in 3D software for cool promos. Different needs, 
quiet deep in. And until the next time.